Hi boys and girls, we're moving on to our next lesson, fractions of a whole. When might we need to use something like fractions of a whole? Well, when we're splitting something up into groups and talking about a certain amount of those groups, just like in division. So for our first example, for our first scenario, I'd like you to think of a bag of M&Ms. And here's our story problem. Jenny had 36 M&Ms. She split them into six equal groups. She ate two-sixths of the M&Ms. How many did she eat? So what I've done here is I've created a picture representation of what Jenny did. She had her 36 M&Ms, and if you count up all of these M&Ms, there will be 36, and she split them equally into six different groups, which means a group of six green, six orange, six brown, six red, six blue, and six yellow. Now, my problem tells me she ate two-sixths of the M&Ms. So what I want you to notice is the bottom number of our fraction normally tells us how many we have in all. However, our problem's telling us we have 36 M&Ms in our bag. So how could six be my denominator if my denominator tells me how many I have in all? Well, we're talking about six groups. Sometimes your denominator tells you how many groups you have in all. And in this case, that's exactly what it does. So I have six groups of M&Ms, and my problem tells me she ate two of those groups. So she ate one group, two groups. And the final question is asking, how many did she eat in all? How many M&Ms did she have all together? If I count up how many were in the two groups, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There would be two groups of six, which would be 12 M&Ms in all. Now, what if you don't have a picture to use? What if they just give you numbers? Well, let's look at some examples. Here is a, just a number representation of the problem that we just did. And I'm gonna teach you a strategy to help you solve fractions of a whole. What I like to do is I like to think of it as a little circle. We move in a circular motion when solving a problem like this. So the first question I want you to ask yourself, this is gonna always be our starting point, our denominator. We're gonna make a loop from our denominator to our whole number, and we're gonna ask ourselves, how many times does six go into 36? So you're asking yourself, how many times does my denominator go into my whole number? And if we know our multiplication facts, we know that six goes into 36 six times. And I'm gonna go ahead and write that number right up on top of my whole number. The next step, what you need to do next, is you need to complete your circle. So we're gonna take our number that we just wrote on top, and we're gonna bring it over to our numerator, and we're gonna multiply it. So we're gonna take that six and multiply it by two, and six times two equals 12. And if we remember our problem from earlier, the picture problem of M&Ms, the answer was in fact 12. So let's try that same circular strategy with this example down here, one third of 18. Now what this means is I have 18 of something. I'm breaking it down into three equal groups and I'm eating or using one of those groups. So let's try the problem using our circular motion. I ask myself, how many times does three go into 18? and it goes in six times, so I write that number in parentheses right on top, and then I complete my circle multiplying six times my numerator, which is one. Six times one equals six. So one-third times 18, or one-third of 18 equals six. All right, I have some example problems for you to try out using that same circular method. Now feel free to draw pictures if you need to. What we have here um, are two separate ways that you might see these problems written. You might see the word of 
which just means to multiply, but I wanted to show you both ways so you can get used to seeing it in both ways. So number one is 3 sixths of 24. Number two, 2 fifths of 10, or 2 fifths times 10. Number three is 1 sixth of 12, and number four, 2 fourths of 16. So try your best with those problems in box number three of your homework sheet. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or strategies, please feel free to put those in box number four of your homework sheet, and we'll go over them tomorrow in class. You've been flipped with Mrs. Manafo.